All right. So let's take a look at uh, question number three for your MathCAD document. We're going to be looking at parallel first order reactions. So let's review what we need to do to set up the differential equations for this on MathCAD. So first thing we need to do is you set your tolerance, right? For uh, your calculations. So let me bring up MathCAD. Let me see if I'm, I've got my audio connected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can follow along. All right. So first thing we need to do is set your MathCAD tolerance zero tolerance to 10 to the negative 300 so set that zero threshold to 300 okay and what else what, what do we do next we need to define your concentration vector we're going to call that x right how many species do we have this time we're looking at oops, three species right our mechanism is a going to b and uh, we're going to make that um, irreversible. So rate, st that's step one. The rate constant for that is K1 and B A going to C. You have parallel reactions, right? That's K2. The rate constant for that is K2. So you have two parallel first order unimolecular reactions. So you have three species, A, B, and C. So we need to set up our concentration vector to be a three-row, one-column matrix, right? So X equals, so X colon, we'll give you that. And then you pull up your matrix um, toolbar. And then you need three rows and one column. And we're going to make things easy. We're just going to be do everything unitless. We start with a concentration of 1 for A, a concentration of 0 initially for product B, and initial concentration of 0 for product C. So that's our concentration matrix. Okay. And according to the handout, what are you supposed to do? Uh, You're going to have rate constants of 10 for K1 and 100 for K2, okay? So we're going to define K1 and K2. So K.1 equals 10. Is that 10? 10 and 100. All right, so we're going to do K.1 equals 10. K.2 equals 100. And I move this here. So let, me just, let me just line them up so it will look neat. Align regions across there. Okay. What's the next thing we need to do? Um, after you've defined your concentration vector, you define your derivative vector. So the derivative, so we're, going to, we're just going to call that variable name D. And then we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So T is that first argument there. And then X is the concentration vector that it depends on. Okay, so derivative vector D is a function of time with respect to time of the X matrix colon. And then insert. So, what? How many? How many rows do we need for this one? Three rows again. You need D A D T, D B D T, and D C D T, right? So here you're going to need the expression for D A D T. In the second one, you're going to need the expression for D B D T. On the third one, you're going to need the expression for DCDT. So let's go back to our 
mechanism. What is VA? Let's what's V1? It's just K1 times concentration of A, right? And V sub negative 1, the reverse, we're assuming the reverse is negligible, so K sub negative 1 is 0. What about V2? It's K2 times concentration of A. So let's set up the expression for DA dt. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to drop these brackets now, okay? So I'm just going to call DA dt equals what happened to species A? minus v1 it's lost in step one it's also lost in step two so minus v2 so it's equal to k1 a minus k1 a right minus k1 k2 a right or you can simplify that you can say that's minus k1 plus k2 times a okay so what's our expression here? Then you're going to say this is going to be equal to minus k dot 1. Let me get rid of these expressions here. Times concentration of A. Which, which element of vector x is a concentration of A? XO, X right? X, open bracket, 0. Okay, use the open bracket so you have an in, uh, a, a numerical index. And then space bar, and then minus k dot 2, minus k2 times, which one? Um, x0 again. X0 again, x open bracket 0. So that's the ADT. Okay, so what's our dBdt? Um, dBdt is plus V1, right? B is formed in step one and that's it. So it's just plus V1. So it's just equal to K1 times a so let me put the expression for dbdt is just k1 so k dot 1 times concentration of a is what x open bracket 0 okay so that's dbdt what about dcdt it's formed in step 2 and that's it right so DC DT is equal to plus V2 is equal to K2 times A. Okay, V2 is just K2 times concentration of A. And make sure you save often. So K dot 2 times what? What should I type next? Concentration of A is X, X0. X open bracket 0. So there's my derivative matrix. Next thing I need to do now is what? Done your derivative matrix. You need to decide how far you want to integrate. Okay. And a good uh, starting point is something close to 1 over k1 if the first step is unimolecular. So what's our k1? Our k1 is 10. So a good t max, let's just say t max equals, oops, equals 1 over k1. That's just, a, that's just a good starting point. You can make, always make that change, change that later, okay? Then you decide on the number of time intervals for which you want MathCAD to calculate the concentration. That's number of points. We're, we're going to call that n points. So let's, let's do 100 points. 
for endpoints equals 100. Endpoints colon. And then finally, we're going to feed this into the RK adapt function. So RK adapt. So we're going to define Z. Colon. Capital R, lowercase k, A, D, A, P, T, RK adapt. What are our variables? Oops. X is your concentration matrix. That's in the first thing that you feed into RK adapt. And then initial time, which is zero. Final time is T max, comma. And then what else do we need? Number of points and then the derivative matrix. So N points and then the derivative matrix. And there's your RK adapt. Okay. So let's look at what these uh, results are. So n colon 0, 1, all the way to n points. You want to display all these points. So you can say z equals, and there's your, there are your numbers right there. Okay. So this first column, column zero, is the time. Oops. Let me move this down. So column zero is time. Column one would be concentration of A. You can see it starts off at one and it starts to drop. And then column two is concentration of B, starts from zero and then it starts going up. Column C, column three is concentration of C. So I can say, all I have to do is type Z equals, yeah. and I have uh, N equals one zero one up to N colon, and then semicolon after the one will give you those two dots. So I can define T at time N to be Z, which column of Z? So under my matrix toolbar right here, this co matrix column zero, subscript, so open bracket N. So the nth value of time is the nth element of column zero of matrix Z. Okay, and then I have on concentration of A at time T sub N equals the nth element of the first column of matrix Z. So Z column one open bracket N. So that's the nth element of column one of matrix Z. And that's your concentration of A. Concentration of B for the nth element would be, what should I do? I'm going to type Z, this time column 2 of matrix Z, space bar, okay, open bracket N, okay, and concentration C for the nth time colon would be the matrix Z's uh, third column, column number three, space bar, open bracket will give you the, and then subscript N. All right? Okay, so I've got this big thing here with the Z, and you can see this, you have, you have to scroll down to see it go all the way down, okay? So you can see if one at n equals 100, all right, time is 0.1. That's your t max. Okay, so let's look at 
let's verify what our t max is t max equals 0.1 that's 1 over 10 okay Your D is showing up in red? Yeah. Okay, hold up. Let me pause this. Okay, so, so let's continue. Let's plot these things. Okay. So I'm going to insert a chart. Insert a graph, X, Y. I'm going to... My X axis is going to be T of N. And my Y axis is... Let's look at A of N. It goes down. Okay. Right? Click on that again, space bar, comma, let's plot B of N. And that's what B looks like. And comma, C of N, let's add C. And that's what C looks like. Alright, so that's A, B, and C. And now let's try to see if it makes sense. Does it make sense? A should just continually drop, right? So react that. Uh, you can change the format uh, by clicking on it and then go to uh, double click on it and you can format how you want this, your traces to show up. Okay. Oh, you click here, space bar until you've got everything selected and then hit comma. That will get you another uh, placeholder for another variable that you can plot. Okay, so like I said, let's see if this thing makes sense. Let's look at our mechanism. What's our mechanism like? According to our mechanism, K1 is, this is 10, right? And this is 100. So, does it make sense that you'll have more C at the end as opposed to B? Yeah, C is being formed 10 times faster than B, right? So you can see then that your C, if you look at the numbers here, your, this C should be 10 times bigger than that B in the end. And in fact, that you'll see that here, if you look at your data, your numbers, scroll down to the bottom, Okay, that's 0.909 is the concentration of C at the end, whereas the concentration of B is 0 0.09. So that's the concentration of C is 10 times more than the concentration of B. Now, this is actually something you want to do when you're, when you're trying to use these math, numerical methods. You want to check them against something that you know what to expect. Okay, so we sort of know what to expect here because this is actually a very simple uh, problem you can actually do a close form integration of this okay so you can solve this thing analytically first of all for example let's look at your a okay your da dt let's look at this expression right here okay that's just we've seen that before negative da dt is equal to, uh da dt is equal to negative k1 plus k2 times concentration of a so you do separation of variables you say da over a equals minus i'm just going to call this k okay k1 plus k2 is just another constant times a and this is just a first order rate law okay i'm oh, sorry this should be dt so if you integrate both sides what do you get ln of a over a naught, right, is equal to minus k of t minus t naught, right? So, if your t naught is zero, then you can say ln of a over a naught is equal to negative kt, all right? Or you can say that ln of a equals... Uh, minus ln of a naught equals negative kt, and so you can say ln of a is equal to ln of a naught minus kt. So what do you expect here? You expect a plot of ln of a versus ln of a naught versus time to be a straight line. It's regular first order decay. You can actually verify that here too. So if you plot, insert a graph. 
versus T of ln of A, ln of A of N versus T of N, you can see you have a straight line. And what's the slope of that line? Oops. Slope is just A at 100 minus, oh, sorry. Slope is ln of A at 100, right? Minus ln of A at zero, at zero. Divided by, so that's delta Y over delta X, which is T at 100 minus T at zero. Okay, let's move that to the left. And so what should that slope be equal to? Negative 110. That's just what? Negative of K1 plus K2. So you can verify that that this actually this this method actually this numerical solution that we got is actually correct. Okay, so that's negative K1 plus K2. What about B and C? Uh, you can actually determine what B and C should be. Let's examine this uh, expression right here for B, and the C should come fairly easily next uh, after that. So DB DT right here is equal to K1A, right? So DB DT is equal to K1. What is A? We already know what A is. What is A? Here, we can rearrange this. You can say A is equal to A naught. Here. A over A naught equals E to the negative KT. So A is just equal to A naught E to the negative KT. All right? So I can plug that in. Instead of writing A there, I can say K1 A naught E to the negative KT. So all I have here are two variables, B and T. So I can do separation of variables again. I can say DB is equal to K1 A naught E to the minus KT DT. Okay. And now I can integrate both sides. What do I get? B minus B naught right, equals I should integral of db is b, right? Evaluated from time 0 to time t is equal to 1. What is this integral right here? I can factor out my constant, so k1 a naught. What is integral of e to the negative kt dt? e to the negative kt over negative k, right? So this is e to the negative kt over negative k evaluated from 0 to time t. Time 0 to time t. So b sub t minus b0 on the left side. So what do I have now? I'm going to move my negative inside. So I'm going to call this k1 over k times a naught. And then I'm going to have negative e to the minus kt evaluated from time 0 to time t. <laughs> and this is going to be equal to k1 over k times a naught. What is e to the minus k times 0? So this is negative e to the minus kt minus e to the 0 e to the 0 is 1, right? Minus, minus, so that's plus 1, right? Let's see if this makes sense. This gives you k1 over k, right? Times a naught times 1 minus e to the negative kt. All right. Let's try to understand what this equation means. I can distribute this. I can say that's K1 over K times A naught 
minus a naught e to the minus kt. Right? Now, this is my starting a. What is this? This is my a at time t, right? So if I subtract a at time t from my initial a, what does that tell me? What's the difference between a, my initial a, and the remaining a? That's the amount of a that got converted to product, right? So this is really just the product of b and c, right? This is your product, total product concentration. So what we're saying then is that b is equal to k1 times what? k1 over k times b plus c. It's a fraction of the total product form, and that fraction happens to be k1 over k. Similarly, if you did the same thing for c, you'll find that c is just equal to k1 over k, uh, k2 over k, b plus c. It's a fraction of the product, total product form. So in other words, k1 over k and k2 over k, you call those branching fractions. What happens if you add k1 over k and k2 over k? You get k1 plus k2 over k, but k is just k1 plus k2. You get 1. Okay? What would be your C to B ratio? It's just going to be K2 over K divided by K1 over K. It's just K2 over K1, which is what we saw. 100 to, 100 to 10, right? So 10 is to 1 ratio. And that's what we were getting when we did this uh, thing right here, right? Which one? For the... No, no, on the graph. On the graph? Yeah. Okay. Right here? Uh, yeah. You just type LN, open parenthesis, A, open parenthesis, yeah, N. Yeah, I think it's putting in the data for this, so... Okay. So those are the results for a parallel first order reaction. Okay? Save that. 